May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be to the greater honor and glory of God. Amen. So as I was studying these three readings, a, a theme came across that I see in these readings is that old uh, battle between uh, uh, salvation by faith and salvation by works. So let me unpack these readings and then I'll talk about how uh, that applies to us in, in this day and age. The first reading is from Amos, and Amos is uh, a farmer in, in the land of uh, Judah, and God get, uh, calls him one day and says, hey, I want you to go to the, up there north to uh, the kingdom of Israel, and because I've got, to, I've got a phone to pick with those people up there. This was a time in northern Israel where uh, Assyria, who was one of their enemies and oppressors, was at a low point. Uh, they were not a real threat. And uh, this uh, king of Israel had expanded out their land again to where it, the normal boundaries had been. It was a time of prosperity for the people or some of the people. And just things were going well up there. And they were worshiping God, they were all happy. But the problem was that there was the haves and the have-nots. And they were, like I said, they were faithfully worshiping God in their temples. Uh, one thing to note, um, Lydia and I, have, we, we've been watching the first two series of The Chosen. And you know that uh, Jesus, Go, makes this uh, sojourn uh, down from Galilee into Samaria and, uh, and he meets the woman at the well and so on and he gets in, in the, the movie or the, the series he gets invited to teach in one of their synagogues and so he, he's taken into where the scrolls are well they only have the first five scrolls of the Bible the, the Pentateuch or the Torah, the laws of Moses. And that's what their focus had always been on, was on the first five books. And so there's, he has this debate with one of his disciples as to which, I think it was John, as to which one he ought to read from. And John says, oh, he's like the creation story. So uh, he reads from that. But so they know their faith, they have faith, they're worshiping God, but yet, the, the nobility and the elite, they're not helping the poor and the needy. That there is this underclass that they're oppressing. And there's injustice going on with those. So, um, the message that Amos wants to give is, you, you're, God is not going to bless you anymore as long as you're keeping this up. This injustice and this, this oppression. Even though you think you're, you have this faith righteousness, this, this worship righteousness, you're not right with God because you're, uh, you're not helping the poor. And God has looked at you like a carpenter, and he's put this plumb line on you, like you would on a wall. And a plumb line obviously tells whether something is straight or not. And they're a little askew because they're they're heavy on their worship, but they're not uh, not enough on their the helping other people. And so God has measured them and found them to be lacking and wanting. Then in the letter of Colossians, we have the exact opposite. We have a church that Paul is 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 happy with, and this is the beginning. And he says. I have heard so much about your faith, your great faith, and that great faith that you you got from the gospel. This is a, a very you know Greek area and a Gentile area, and they've heard the gospel, they've accepted the gospel, they have believed in uh, salvation through Jesus Christ, and that has brought about good works. 
uh, that, that, that go from that. I've, I've heard that you have this wonderful faith in Jesus Christ and that it is bearing fruit for the kingdom. So he's basically saying, keep up the good work. Then in the gospel reading, we have uh, this lawyer that comes up and it says to test Jesus. And so he says, you know, what, what are the, 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 what's the greatest commandment of all the commandments? And this is something that these Jewish lawyers, they sit around all the time. And they just, they just debate this, just hour upon hour. Oh, which is the great commandment? Oh, this commandment. Oh, no, 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 that commandment. And so he's, he's not testing Jesus to get him to say, you know, to get him in trouble. He's just bantering about with him as he would with any other Pharisee or, or scribe or whatever. But Jesus turns it on him and says, so what do you think? What do you read? What do you hear? And he, so he recites, the lawyer recites the Shema, which is, O Israel, the God is one God alone. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. Love your, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says, yep, you got it right. You nailed it. That's it. And it could have been left just like that. But then the lawyer had to say, well, you know, but do I really have to love everybody? Who, who is my neighbor? And so Jesus then tells this, this parable of the Good Samaritan. And it's funny that, uh, uh, that as I <coughs> mentioned, it's when in this uh, show, the, the Chosen, when Jesus and his Jewish disciples come down, they're ridiculed and, and, and kind of hated by some of the Samaritans because there's this en en enmity between uh, the Jews and the Samaritans because the northern Israel was, or a good part of it, was taken into exile and that they uh, intermarried in with some Assyrians and so on. There was another part of the northern kingdom that migrated south and escaped and went into Judah, and they helped write, you know, some of the rest of the Bible. It's kind of a mishmash. So, uh, for Jesus to tell the story about the Samaritan to this Jewish person, you know, he's, he's kind of, I can see this lawyer kind of cringing just a little bit. Uh, think about if Jesus had had said something about somebody that you don't particularly like. Well, this person that you don't like, he, he, he did this. So it, it's funny that uh, when Jesus says uh, that, okay, so who is the one that showed mercy? That it, there's such an anathema that the man says, well, it's, you know, it's the, this one that showed mercy. He couldn't bring himself to say, oh, well, it was the Samaritan person. He couldn't bring himself to do that. So from these three readings and in this theme of faith uh, versus works righteousness, I come up with three points that out of this readings. The first is that the kingdom of God is not like a Chuck E. Cheese or a Buster and Davis. If you've ever been to those, they've got the games and so on. You play the games and you get all these tickets and then you redeem the tickets, you know, for prizes. So heaven is, and uh, faith is not like that, where for every good work that you do, this <laughs> heavenly machine kicks out tickets. And then when you die, you go up to heaven and you go, oh, I want to redeem these tickets. Doesn't work that way. <laughs> Sorry, you probably got a lot of tickets, don't you? <laughs> yeah, so good deeds don't earn you big prizes in heaven. You can't score points for the afterlife. Uh, that's a word I make a bit song. <clears throat> Second, the two great commandments are not a flip of the coin. There's not one side that says, you know, love God, and the other side that says love your neighbor, or one side that says have faith in Jesus Christ, and the other side says 
you know, do good works. And you can't just flip the coin and whichever one comes up. It's not an either nor or. It's not a choice that, that uh, you have to have that faith and you have to have that love in Jesus Christ. And then it's that Holy Spirit, that third part of the Holy Trinity that uh, is our advocate and our guide, and most importantly, our guide. It's that part of our Jiminy Cricket, our conscience, that, that, uh, that urges us to do the, the bear the good fruit, to do the good works of God. It's faith first, then comes the works, not necessarily the other way around. But we are given free will by God, so we have the right to say no to the Holy Spirit and say, no, I don't feel like doing that today. No, I don't feel like bearing good works today or the rest of my life. But it comes at a cost. It comes at a cost of, cor of corruption of our soul, of callousing our soul to the point that we, 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 uh, we stop hearing the Holy Spirit urging us to good works. And then we start going in the other direction. Then we start acting like that priest and that Levite in the parable of the Good Samaritan, where when it comes time where we're put in a position to bear good fruit, to do a good work, we cross on the other side and go around it. Those two great commandments, love God and love your neighbor as yourself, there are plumb lines. There are balance. There are, are uh, yeah. There, there are level in our life, and our plumb line always needs to be balanced and straight. That is equal parts faith in Jesus Christ and the good works that come that go along with it. That Jesus is urging us to have balance in our life in both, not just in for eternal life because that was the ultimate goal when the lawyer says what do I have to have to have eternal life Jesus says if you do these things love God and love your neighbor you will live now he will have eternal life but he will also have a good life in this life that if we have faith in Jesus Christ and we live that out in our life we get these things called joy and love and happiness and it's kind of like a contagious disease. That once we do it once and we get those endorphins and that and that's adrenaline and all those other good happy drugs from having faith and loving uh, our neighbor, that we want to do it again and again and again because it, we want that, that, that disease to keep going, that wonderful disease. So the question I asked this morning is how is your fun line? Is it good and straight? If God were to measure you, would you say, yes, I have a good balance between my the, the two great commandments to love God with all my heart and soul and to love my neighbor as myself and I'm bearing good fruit? Or are we just showing up here on a Sunday morning and worshiping and then ignoring the world outside and going around on the other side? when there are those in need? Do we have a healthy balance between loving God and loving our neighbor? Amen. Amen. Amen.